new support for some extinct Tasmanian tiger sightings. The last thylacine died in captivity in 1936, but a statistical analysis adds a degree of validity to the survival of small groups of the carnivorous marsupials. Depending on whom you ask, the Tasmanian tiger or thylacine has either been extinct for nearly a century or has been just really good at hiding. Now new research examining hundreds of reports from more than a century shows there is a good chance the thylacine may have persisted for a few decades longer in the most remote parts of Tasmania. There are pockets where the species could have maintained small populations said Barry Broke, a professor of environmental sustainability at the University of Tasmania. One of the problems with the thylacine, and extinction in general, is it's hard to prove something is truly gone. Australia's night parrot, for instance, was thought to be extinct for 140 years until its recent rediscovery. The last known thylacine was given to Hobartzu in Tasmania in 1931, dying in captivity in 1936. European settlers, some of whom harbored mostly unwarranted fears that the animal would attack livestock, relentlessly hunted the striped, carnivorous marsupials, which resembled wolves more than felines. The Tasmanian government even offered bounties on the thylacines. By the early 1900s, the population had crashed, dr. Brooks said. But cryptologists, hikers and even the occasional hunter or park ranger have reported thylacine sightings for decades after the animal's presumed extinction in Tasmania, driving speculation about whether 1936 was the final death knell of the species or did it hang on dr. Brooks said. He and his colleagues decided to take a statistical approach, combining all the reports they could gather and rating them in terms of reliability to improve their understanding of when and where the thylacine might have gone extinct. For a study published last month in the journal Science of the Total Environment, D.R. Brooks' team studied 1,237 Tasmanian tiger reports from 1,910 onward. It classified these reports in terms of credibility. More than half of the reports came from the general public. The team also found spikes of sightings that were probably linked to high-profile thylacine news in Australia, what D.R. Brooks' team called recency bias. Some reports between 1,910 and 1,937 were of confirmed captures or kills, with the last fully wild photographed kill occurring in 1,930. D.R. Brooks' team considered another four reports of kills and captures releases from 1933-37 legitimate. Continue reading the main story. For the following eight decades, 26 deaths and 16 captures were reported but not verified, as were 271 reports made by people that Dr. Brooks' team considered experts, former trappers, outdoorsmen, scientists or officials. These types of high-quality reports from experts peaked in the 1930s and started to fall in the 1940s. People who had definitely trapped or seen thylacines before the 1930s and who presumably knew what they were looking at had either died or retired by the 1970s. That whole pool of expertise kind of dries up by the 1970s, Dr. Brooks said. The best quality report after that, he said, came from a park officer who saw one in 1982. A model based on all these reports reveals Tasmanian tigers likely went extinct between the 1940s and 1970s, with a smaller chance they persisted in remote areas until the 1980s or even the early 2000s. Brandon Holmes, an independent conservationist and editor of the recent book Thylacine. The history, ecology and loss of the Tasmanian tiger and who was not involved in Dr. Brooks' study, called the research a laudable attempt to find out when and where the thylacine likely went extinct using a large data set of reports. The last members of a species are invariably, almost, never seen by humans, particularly on an island as large and sparsely populated as Tasmania Mr. Holmes said in an email. But he noted that not everyone may agree with the quality rating of some of the reports the team analyzed. Nick Mooney, who studied Tasmanian wildlife for decades and who also wasn't involved in Dr. Brooks' study, put it another way. You have court cases without any witnesses, just scraps of reports written down by other people. Mr. Mooney has interviewed hundreds of people who reported thylacines. 
he found that most either misidentified the creature they saw, lied or were delusional, and that a psychological effect or modified memory might be to blame in some cases. At the same time, Mr. Mooney finds the 1982 report by a part officer relatively credible. I don't disagree with the authors except to say their conclusions are somewhat optimistic, considering the material used, he said. Dr. Brooks' analysis found there to be a very small chance that the thylacine is still around today. For that possibility, Mr. Mooney said that even if Tasmanian tigers did persist past 1936, the likelihood of their still being around shrinks all the time. Someone should have found one by now, given the high levels of roadkill in Tasmania and the increasing use of trail cameras in more remote parts. Dr. Brooke agrees that we are unlikely to discover surviving thylacines. The hope for some people is that the thylacine is a Lazarus species that will rise from its tomb and walk again, he said, but that unfortunately hasn't happened. Tasmanian Tiger redirects here. For the cricket team, see Tasmanian Tigers. For other uses, see thylacine, disambiguation. The thylacine, binomial name Thylacinus cynocephalus, also commonly known as the Tasmanian tiger or Tasmanian wolf, is an extinct carnivorous marsupial that was native to the Australian mainland and the islands of Tasmania and New Guinea. They had almost died out out on the Australian mainland from around 2,000 years ago, most likely because of the introduction of dingoes or due to climate change. Prior to European settlement around 5,000 remained in the wild on Tasmania. Beginning in the 19th century they were perceived as a threat to the livestock of farmers and bounty hunting was introduced. The last known of its species died in 1936 at Hobart Zoo in Tasmania. The thylacine is widespread in popular culture and is a cultural icon in Australia. The thylacine was known as the Tasmanian tiger because it displayed dark transverse stripes that radiated from the top of its back, and it was known as the Tasmanian wolf because it had the general appearance of a medium to large size conid. The name thylacine is derived from th lacos meaning pouch and ein meaning pertaining to, and refers to the marsupial pouch. Both genders had a pouch. The females used theirs for rearing young and the males used theirs as a protective sheath, covering the external reproductive organs. It also had a stiff tail and could open its jaws to an unusual extent. The thylacine was an apex predator, though exactly how large its prey had been is disputed. Its closest living relatives are the other members of Dasyuromorphia including the Tasmanian devil. The thylacine had died out on New Guinea and very few were left on the Australian mainland before European settlement of the continent. Intensive hunting on Tasmania is generally blamed for its extinction, but other contributing factors were disease, the introduction of and competition with dingoes, human encroachment into its habitat and climate change. The remains of the last known thylacine were discovered at the Tasmanian Museum and Art Gallery in 2022. Since extinction there have been numerous searches and reported sightings of live animals, none of which have been confirmed. The thylacine has been used extensively as a symbol of Tasmania. The animal is featured on the official coat of arms of Tasmania. On 7 September, the date in 1936 on which the last known thylacine died, National Threatened Species Day is commemorated in Australia. Universities, museums and other institutions across the world research the animal. Its whole genome sequence has been mapped and there are efforts to clone and bring them back to life. Taxonomic and Evolutionary History This is the earliest known non-indigenous illustration of a thylacine from Harris 1808 description. Numerous examples of thylacine engravings and rock art have been found, dating back to at least 1000 BC. 14 petroglyph images of the thylacine can be found at the Dampier Rock Art Precinct on the Burke Peninsula in Western Australia. By the time the first European explorers arrived, the animal was already extinct in mainland Australia and New Guinea, and rare in Tasmania. Europeans may have encountered it in Tasmania as far back as 1642, when Abel Tasman first arrived in Tasmania. His shore party reported seeing the footprints of wild beasts having claws like a tiger. Mark Joseph Marion Dufresne, arriving with the Mascarin in 1772, reported seeing a tiger cat. The first definitive encounter was by French explorers on 13 May 1792, as noted by the naturalist Jacques Labillardy Ray, in his journal from the expedition led by D'Intercasto. 
In 1805, William Patterson, the Lieutenant Governor of Tasmania, sent a detailed description for publication in the Sydney Gazette. He also sent a description of the thylacine in a letter to Joseph Banks, dated 30 March 1805. The first detailed scientific description was made by Tasmania's Deputy Surveyor General, George Harris, in 1808, five years after first European settlement of the island. Harris originally placed the thylacine in the genus Didelphus, which had been created by Linnaeus for the American opossums, describing it as Didelphus cynocephala, the dog-headed opossum. Recognition that the Australian marsupials were fundamentally different from the known mammal genera led to the establishment of the modern classification scheme, and in 1796, Geoffroy St. Hilaire created the genus Dasiurus, where he placed the thylacine in 1810.